Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. Um, today's lecture is called Past and Future in Minkowski Spacetime. This lecture is part of the course called Relativity for All, presented on Unisor.com. I suggest you to watch this lecture from the website, from the Unisor.com, because every lecture, including this one, contains textual uh, equivalent. Basically, it's like a piece of a textbook which is completely in sync with this particular lecture. Also, the website contains two prerequisite courses, Math for Teens and uh, Physics for Teens. Uh, the knowledge presented in these two courses is definitely a must for understanding relativity. Uh, also, there are some problems to solve, exercises. Um, there is some functionality on this website. Uh, in case, for example, you would like to study something under somebody's supervision, like your parents or teacher, so there is a uh, all the necessary functionality to accomplish this. Otherwise, you can do obviously self-study, uh, and for self-study, you don't even have to sign in. By the way, um, uh, there is no advertisement on the website. The website is completely free, so use it at will. Okay, so today we will talk about, we continue talking about Minkowski's view on the theory of relativity. It came in 1907, just a couple of years after Einstein has introduced in uh, the theory, special theory of relativity in his paper, 1905, <coughs> and it presents a certain more geometrical, so to speak, view onto theory of relativity. In the previous lecture, um, I, uh, we basically studying the whole concept of Minkowski uh, four-dimensional space, which contains three-dimensional our space which we live, plus one-dimension time. So it's four-dimensional space-time. So that's why I call it space plus time. Sometimes people even drop um, uh, uh, plus or, or, or dash or even space between space and time and have it as one word, space-time. Okay, so it's all about Minkowski's representation of theory of relativity. Now, the problem is that four-dimensional space-time, it's kind of difficult to visualize. So, for educational purposes and for the purposes of easier vis visualization, um, we usually concentrate explanation on two-dimensional space, which is like movement on the plane and one-dimensional time. So that makes it three, and three-dimensional can be, in some projection, actually uh, presented graphically. So that's what I will do, definitely. So we'll continue talking about two-dimensional space plus one-dimensional time, but we have in mind that it's all related to three-dimensional space plus one-dimensional time. So it's four-dimensional space time. All right, so that's number one. Number two, let's assume now we are dealing with this three-dimensional uh, space-time, two dimensions where movements actually occurring, and one-dimensional time. So we'll have x and y here, and t up there. Okay. Right. Now, in the previous lecture, we were talking about um, presentation of the movement uh, not on the plane where it actually occurs, because their representation is just a trajectory, but how the point moves along this trajectory is not really visualized. But if we will stretch it uh, towards time, so at every moment in time we see where exactly the point is, we will have something which is called world line which contains world points projection of these will be the trajectory but the world line really represents the movement at any moment in time what are my x and y coordinates of the point okay now if the point moves along the plane it's always uh, on certain distance from the beginning let's say the beginning 
at t is equal to zero, point is at the origin of coordinates. So that's the beginning. Time is zero and coordinates at zero. That's, that's where the point starts. Now, at any moment time, t, what is the distance from the origin? Well, obviously, the distance is equal to square root of x square of t plus y square of t in our plane. Again, having in mind that in three-dimensional physical movement plus one dimensional time, that would be plus z square. But forget about this for now. So this is the distance from the beginning. Obviously, it's function of t. Now, special theory of relativity is based upon two principles. One principle is principle of relativity, and the second one is principle of constancy of the speed of light. And from this followed that the speed of light is the maximum possible speed. Now, since speed of light is maximum possible speed, our d of t should be less than or equal speed of light times time. Because the point cannot be further from the beginning, <coughs> from the origin, than the light can cover the distance during the same time. So this will be a very important um, equation which basically tells whether it is or it is not possible um, to consider a point at coordinates x, y as belonging to a trajectory started at point zero. So let's just, uh, nobody, nobody likes square roots, so let's just do it different. The d square of t is equal to x square of t plus y square of t. And this would be x square of t plus y square of t less than or equal to c squared t squared. So this is an equation which basically dictates uh, the possibility of x, y to be part of the trajectory of a point that at point z, at point t equal to zero, starts at the origin of coordinates. If point does not satisfy this equation, it cannot be a physical trajectory of an object which starts at this point and reaches this point at time t. Just not possible. Okay. Now, that's very important. But now I would like to express it geometrically, because the whole concept of Minkowski space-time was to present it in, I, a, as some kind of visualization of special theory of relativity. Well, what is this? Well, first of all, let me just wipe this thing out. And now we will talk about pure geometry. If you have a three-dimensional space, let's say x, y, and t, <coughs> what is what is a surface which satisfies this particular um, equation? Well, it's actually quite easy. At point t is equal to zero, it's supposed to be only zero, because these are sum of two squares, and if it's equal to zero, it's supposed to be equal to zero, each one of them. And then, as t grows, um, the distance, which is this distance from the um, t-axis, is also growing. Now, what if this is constant? Well, what this represents when this is equal to constant? This is a circle. So at any fixed t, this is a circle of increasing radius. Obviously, t is increasing, so the radius is increasing. So it's a cone, basically. It's very easy to show that the radius, uh, well, very easy. Square root is a radius. Square root is ct. This is proportional to t, so radius is proportional to t. So 
if we will increase it by two times the distance from the origin, the radius is increasing by two times. So that's obviously a cone. Now that's for positive t. For negative t, the cone goes down. So this is a cone when it's equal. Now, when it's less than equal, what is this? Well, that's inside of the cone. And greater than, this is less than, and this is greater than, outside of the cone. So, whatever is inside of the cone represents the world lines, represent the world points, which can be um, reached by point which starts at point zero, at time zero. So you can have all the world lines which represent movement on the x, y, z within this particular cone. And the whatever it was with the point before it reached this zero point in the past is within the bottom coin, the cone, sorry, cone. So that's what I meant past and future. So all the past positions of the point are in this cone or the future position world point but I'm talking about world point because the point is moving only within the x y um, plane but the world point which basically stretches along the uh, timeline would belong future there and past here so that is basically a very important thing we have introduced this cone which is called light cone and the upper part represents the future possible future positions future world point positions in the space-time and the bottom cone represents the past positions of the world point in the space-time provided at point uh, at time zero the point is which is present basically so present is time zero um, so we know that the point is here and that's the origin of coordinates then we draw the, uh, the cones using this uh, equation and basically we are saying okay the point might have been here and will be here but definitely not outside of this cone so this part is called usually time-like part of the space-time and inside the cones, outside of the cones, it's usually called space-like part of the space-time. So the space-time is divided, so to speak, into time-like, which is inside of both bottom and, and top cones, and outside of the cones. Okay. Um, what's next? Next is the following. What if you have any kind of a trajectory you would like to see what exactly can happen with the point so wherever the point is at any moment of time you can always start from putting your origin of coordinate at that particular point so it, if it moves on the plane like this, so you can always start here at any point, have the coordinates here, and build the cone here, here, and say, okay, if this is the point right now, at present time, the future behavior would be expressed in a space-time, in Minkowski space-time. The world points would be here. And the previous, these physical points can be represented by world point within this cone. Which means that at, if you would view only the viewpoints, if you have this. Now, if, uh, right now I'm talking about only world points. So it moves here on the XY plane, but the world points are, are here. Now at any point you can build the cone and say that the future behavior should be within this cone and the past behavior be between this cone and in this point exactly the same thing you can build this cone here and say okay future should belong to here and the past definitely supposed to be here so it actually gives you certain restriction on the trajectory trajectory cannot go 
sideways, so to speak, on this particular picture too much, too fast, because it means it goes along the space coordinates faster than the speed of light. So at any point, it should be more vertical, so to speak, than horizontal. The horizontal uh, component is very much restricted by the speed of light. So that's why this inside of the cones is called time-like. Okay, now, the last thing which I wanted to talk about is the following. We have basically come up with this equation. Or in three dimensional would be plus z square. Doesn't really matter. Now, let's just rewrite it. Ct square minus x square of t minus y square of t. And I will use the third dimension because right now we have covered all the geometry. Now this is supposed to be greater or equal to zero, right? That's the condition. Condition of the point uh, x, y, z, t in, Minkow in Minkowski four-dimensional space-time to be a possible world point of a uh, position uh, of the trajectory which started at zero, 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 zero. Okay? Now, but what is this? If you remember, in the previous lecture, we were talking about matrix in Minkowski space-time. And what was important for us, that the matrix which we introduced, which is basically a distance between two points, to be uh, invariant relative to um, invariant uh, Lorentz uh, transformation, which means it will be the same in any inertial frame where we will measure this distance between these two points. So the distance between two points expressed as this expression, again, that go back to previous lecture, this was called d square. Uh, I, I don't really need the a and b. If you remember, we have introduced this uh, c square of t b minus t a square mi uh, minus minus x uh, b minus x a square minus y b minus y a square minus z. Now we have introduced this as a distance between two points a and b where x a y a and z a and t a are coordinates of the point in the space-time of the A point and correspondingly for B. So that was the introduction of the distance. So what we're talking here right now is this is this part. It's a distance between a point at moment T and a point at moment zero, right? Because we were talking about if T is equal to zero, x of 0 equals to y of 0 equals to z of 0 is equal to 0. So at moment 0, we are at the point uh, at origin of coordinates. So this represents this distance between Tb and Xb and, uh, and Xa and Xb, etc. All the b's are x of t, y of t, and z of t. And point A is zero, 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 zero. So the distance between these points is exactly this. So our condition on the possibility of the point to be within the cone is the same as I would say that the distance, the Minkowski distance, this invariant distance between world point uh, and uh, origin of coordinates, if it's positive, 
that means that it is within the cone and it is possible to be to have a, a representation of a trajectory of a real trajectory of a real object if it's not positive uh, if it's zero then it means that our object is moving with the speed of light and if it's negative it means that it's impossible to be a point the world point which represents a position of the uh, point that started at origin at t equal to zero. So that's how we are relating the um, physical movement within this Min Minkowski space-time with a distance. So the physical movement is basically such that the distance, Minkowski distance, this invariant relative to Lorentz uh, transformation distance, to be non-negative. So that's the condition. That's basically it. Yeah, that's it. I recommend you to read the description, which accompanies notes, basically, which accompany this lecture on the um, unizor.com. So you go to unizor.com, choose relativity for all um, course. Then uh, next uh, menu topic would be Minkowski view. And within Minkowski view, you will see this lecture about past and future. And uh, reading it with basically uh, is presentation of the same material in a um, uh, just textual form with a couple of nice pictures. So that's it. Thank you very much, and good luck. <laughs>